up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren if you're new here and welcome to my very first decoding video of the new TS7 era. I'm so excited, man, it feels so good to say those words. It feels good to be back and there's just so much happening. I've got so much to cover in today's video. So let's just hop right in. Yes, before you comment down below, I decided to film today's video at my desk because I have a lot of notes, a lot of rumors to cover, so I wanted to make sure I have my water and my notes right in front of me. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, I'm Lauren. Make sure you are subscribed. I talk about all things pop culture from a positive light and of course my Taylor Swift Tuesdays and decoding videos. And if you're here, I know you're a Swifty, so I know that you're just as excited as I am to get into this video. Make sure you're following me on all of my social media handles and I recently launched a Patreon. All of those links will be in the description below if you want to join the lip fan community. Community. But first guys, I'm so excited to tell you that my decoding video today is sponsored by Amino Apps and Swifties listen up because this pertains to you and it's 100% free. So Amino is an app that connects millions of different communities of people to unite around their passions, their fandoms, and their interests. They reached out to me and told me about the Swifties Amino and you guys, it's amazing. I gotta be honest, I got lost in it for a few hours just like looking through all of the posts and chatting with people. I really wanna tell you about it. So after you download and sign up for your free account, type in Swifties or click enter Amino. And it's just so fun. Look at this Swifties Amino. Let's look at this one for example. This person made a bunch of profile gifts and they just made all these profile gifts and they were like, you can use them if you want on your profile. And I just think it's so fun. What I love so much is just scrolling through the featured and seeing what people have started conversations about. This one, album meanings. Let's click on this one. As the reputation era comes to a slow ending, I'm gonna make a blog about what each album means to me at the moment. Oh, wait, that's amazing. It's just another fun way for you to connect with Swifties out there. And I just love the like, creativity and the things you can do with your profile. So I just created two public chat rooms on my Amino and I want you guys to come join me and chat with me there. Download the free app, the link is in my description and then come tell me and post a video or photo of what your genuine reaction was to the Me Music video because Oof, we all know that was epic. Come say hi. Yes, oh my God, I'm the first person and I'm talking to myself. So, all right, I'll see you there and let's get into the decoding. So as we all know, Taylor Swift dropped her brand new lead single of her new album, Me, along with a music video starring Brandon Urie from Panic at the Disco, Be Still, My 90s Heart. Like I said, I did a reaction video. Make sure you go watch that. I did have some struggles and technical difficulties getting it up because it got hit with copyright. So I had to re-upload it three times. So it is still there, I promise. I sadly wasn't able to monetize the video because YouTube is being weird, but honestly, I just really really wanted to share my genuine reaction with you all, so I hope that you go watch it and enjoy it. But Taylor Swift has done it again. She has included so many clues and hints that I can barely keep up with it. The song as a whole celebrates individuality, confidence, and it's a really catchy pop song. Honestly, it might be the most poppy pop song from Taylor Swift that I've ever heard. She recently said about it that she really wanted her first single to be a happy and catchy song and she wanted it to be very playful and fun. Well, she definitely succeeded because that song has been stuck in my head since the moment it came out. All right, well, let's get into the decoding and I will go through it with you all scene by scene. So. The opening title on a colorful brick road, which is obviously giving us a hint that she is now on a much more colorful path musically. And I love the fact that it was directed by both Taylor Swift and Dave Myers. We see a pastel pink snake slithering through the colorful brick road. Could this be Karen the snake from the Reputation era? Maybe. And when you look really closely at this part, you might notice that the snake has different colored eyes and that they're kind of blue. Well, when I Googled this, I learned that if you see a snake with blue eyes, that means the snake is about to shed. The color change is often referred to as going opaque or going blue. How relevant and on brand is that for Taylor Swift? And it's a sign that a snake is ready to unveil its new skin. So, yep, that seems to be correct. Taylor Swift is shedding her skin from 2018, and then we literally get to see the snake turn into a burst of rainbow colored butterflies, signaling the end of reputation and the beginning of a new era. Woo, so exciting. I love these pastel colored butterflies, by the way. So pretty, do these really exist? I don't know things like this. We then focus in on Taylor Swift's character in a bright blue wall department looking like she's in an argument with her lover. Not only that, she's in a French argument with her lover. Taylor Swift is speaking French. That was a shock to me, didn't know that she could do that. So this apartment set has a ton of hidden Easter eggs. So let's go through all of them first. Obviously there are a ton of cat themed objects lying around. There's a statue of a cat near the window. There's two paintings of cats on the the wall. And of course, Meredith and Olivia, her actual cats are on the couch. And you might not have noticed this, but if you pause the video and you look out the window, you do see a single palm tree in the window. There is definitely something to it with these palm trees, you guys. I can feel it. I mean, there's no way that that first Instagram post didn't mean something. We just got to figure out what it means. And then possibly one of the biggest Easter eggs that's been talked about the past day and a half is the Christmas tree in the corner. Taylor recently told us herself that this Christmas tree on the set is a big clue for something. If you're watching this, that means the video for me is out. Yes. Um, I'm gonna give you a tour of my fake apartment. Check it out. 
that's the fake Christmas tree may or may not be a clue for some. So we all already know that Taylor Swift grew up on a Christmas tree farm and that it, this could possibly be referencing that in her childhood, but I have a feeling that that's not actually the clue. It's the red herring. Someone named Ben on Twitter pointed out that this Instagram post was posted last year by Taylor Swift at her Christmas tree farm and it was posted on July 13th, 2018. Because of that, they think that means the album will be released on July 13th. And that's a pretty good theory because July 13th has a stamp on it. But also here is another Christmas tree theory that also points to July 13th as a significant date. And this one is brilliant, you guys, it blew my mind. Samantha on Twitter said, so there was a stamp on April 13th and 13 days later was 426. Me upside down makes a 13 W, which could signal 13 weeks. 13 weeks from now is July 26th, which is a day after Christmas in July. The Christmas tree is a clue. July 26th is 13 days after July 13th, which also has a stamp. Whoa, Samantha, good job here. So she thinks that something will be announced on July 13th and that July 26th could be another album release date or maybe another single. That's a really, really good one. Good sleuthing skills right there. I mean, we have been hearing a possible that TS7 could be a summer album, which would be absolutely incredible. And honestly, now that I think about it, the fact that Taylor Swift released her lead single in April is definitely pointing to the sign that she's gonna be releasing her album much sooner than the fall. That's an awesome theory. I think it's a really, really good one. All right, back to the video. Now we're in the part of the video where Taylor and Brendan are having their French fight. Taylor screams at Brendan, how dare you speak to me that way in front of our daughters? pointing at Meredith and Olivia. So right here, this might be a reference to how everyone thinks that Taylor Swift is pregnant with Joe Alwyn's baby, or it could just be Taylor Swift's way of like letting us know and reaffirming the fact that she literally sees Olivia and Meredith as her children. Either way, they both fit. And then as she storms out of the bedroom, we see the rose gold bar cart from Taylor Swift's Instagram. It seems that her Instagram countdown over the past two weeks was really just her giving us an inside look at certain parts of the set and the costumes from this music video. So yeah, I was definitely wrong about my wedding theory, but you know what? That's why they're called theories. They're just fun. I don't know. It, it seemed like it was right at the time. Okay, moving on. Oh yeah, there was one more thing about the scene that I wanted to bring up to you guys that someone brought to my attention. Someone recently pointed out that the only words that are capitalized in Brendan and Taylor's fight are, you are so dramatic, how dare you, and I am calm and that maybe those words could be song names. That's definitely a possibility because we do know that Taylor Swift has a thing with capitalizing letters that actually are super, super significant and mean something later on. Those could potentially even be song lyrics from this new album. I think that's what I believe more, that these are actually song lyrics from upcoming songs that we don't know, more so than track names, but only time will tell. Then when she's out dancing in the hallway, we once again see palm trees in the window, further confirming that we have more to learn about these palm trees that she keeps showing us. All right, now back to the apartment, we have finally at long last solved the mystery of the cool chicks on the wall. I found this to be pretty funny, to be honest. I kind of want like a photo wall like this in my life somewhere. But also, did you see that amongst the chickens and sunglasses, we see a painted portrait of the Dixie Chicks? This right here means to me that a collaboration with Taylor Swift and the Dixie Chicks on this upcoming album is absolutely happening. It's probably already like created and produced knowing Taylor Swift and her secret ways. I mean, it has to. Not to mention the fact that the Dixie Chicks and Taylor Swift recently had a Twitter exchange where the Dixie Chicks sent her a side eye emoji and Taylor Swift responded back, Chicks stands never unstand. So yep, that's confirmation in my mind that we can expect that hopefully this era. And then here's something that I actually need your guys' help with because I'm not totally sure. As the camera zooms in on the wall of chicks, there's also a small stack of red books on the table. We have kind of figured out that the top book is called Cartier in the 20th century, so maybe something to do with jewelry. Honestly, I have no idea what this particular book title means. So if you have an idea or a theory, please comment down below and let me know what that is because I'm a little lost there. And then we go on to the staircase. Now, a few of you guys out there have said that this looks like the exact same staircase from the Look What You Made Me Do music video. I mean, it very well could be a reference to when Taylor Swift is sitting on the throne and she's the queen of snakes. Maybe she's saying that her once dark and gray castle has now turned bright and full of clouds. I don't know. You tell me what you think about the clouds. Let's talk about these clouds for a second. Of course, there are 13 clouds in this room, duh. We also see Taylor Swift walk past what looks like the same type of phone from Look What You Made Me Do before she pushes it back down into the cloud. Now, okay, these clouds really interest me. I spent a long time staring at them, seeing if they like had any particular meaning, if there was like figures in the clouds, and 
To be honest with you, I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see anything other than a few lightning bolts. But you let me know in the comments if you saw something otherwise that I didn't catch. We then see the clouds turning into snakes, following her, and then one of them even devours a scared looking Taylor. But she then realizes that once the smoke is gone, she's okay, she's fine. In fact, She's better than she ever was. This part right here actually reminds me of like the phoenix rising from the ashes, ready to start anew, which I feel like is perfectly on brand for Taylor Swift right now. Okay, this one is also brilliant. That's like my word of the day today. And I have to give credit to Swift and Vine on Twitter for seeing this one. You have to look very, very carefully and you probably have to rewatch it a few times. But as Taylor walks away from the clouds and into the daylight, you see shadows on the ground that look pretty odd. You have to really slow it down to catch it, but these are the shadows of the falling old tailors who are fighting to the top in the Look What You Made Me Do music video. Pretty brilliant work right there, I've gotta say. Taylor Swift is leaving behind her old selves and she is stepping into the daylight and letting it go. Woo! And then, as soon as she leaves the castle, her entire world is brighter and much more vibrant. She's wearing a bright yellow jacket and all the dancers are in pastels. Now we know where this Instagram came from. She's dancing in the street with her seven dancers who all have seven briefcases. Yep, seven for TS7. Or could it mean something else? I'll touch on that in just a second. So, the briefcases. They seem kind of random, but after I sat there and thought about it for a second, here are my thoughts on that. In the scene before, we saw her all decked out in this gorgeous dress with her hair and makeup done, and now we see her in a power suit surrounded by briefcases. And here's when she says the line, I promise that you'll never find another like me. Maybe here she's saying, I can go from ball gown to business suit and not even miss a beat because I'm that awesome. Maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think is the reason that she decided to use briefcases at all? Like what went into her mind when she was like, props, we need props, let's go with briefcases. Cases. Also, now I have to tell you that Taylor Swift in her live stream with Brandon Urie said to pay close attention to the numerology in this video, specifically the number of briefcases and the number of clouds. Obviously, we've already counted those, so there's seven briefcases and 13 clouds. 713. Guys, that date keeps coming back around. I honestly think that this is like now confirmation that like July 13th, something's gonna happen or something's gonna be announced. Sounds correct, I don't know. Then while all of the colorful dancing is going on down below, we see Brendan looking out longingly at the street, making us believe that he wants to get out there and join him. But before I move on, I have to share something else with you from this scene. I actually tweeted this yesterday, so let me know your thoughts on this because I don't really see other people out there talking about it. This cat painting on the wall. This cat seems to be staring at the door, wanting to get outside. The wallpaper in the top right is like starting to peel, revealing a colorful outside, almost like a snake shedding its skin. Now, that is just something that I just thought of myself when I was like looking at it and I was like, the camera angle isn't completely like focused on Brendan. They're showing a lot of that. So I was like, maybe that was on purpose. But those are my thoughts. I also fully believe that Taylor Swift herself painted that photo. We all know Taylor Swift loves to paint. That definitely like seems like her vibe and aesthetic. But tell me what you think about this. I don't know. I don't know what it means. I just thought I'd bring it up to you guys so we can all discuss it. I could be wrong. So tell me if I just blew your mind or if I just made myself sound a little bit more crazy. Either way, let me know your thoughts. And then also here, the clock is set to 8.30, which has made a lot of people out there believe that something big is gonna happen on 8.30, August 30th. I don't really see Taylor Swift missing out on this opportunity to tell us something through the clock. So yeah, I could see something happening there. And then Brendan leaves the dark apartment, he jumps from the balcony in a colorful suit and he floats around Mary Poppins style to where Taylor Swift is perched on top of a unicorn gargoyle thing. Very casual. All right, so right here in the background, we see a bright pink neon sign that says Lover, which has led a lot of us, I would probably say the majority of us, to believe that her new album is gonna be called Lover. I could definitely see this as well. Also, here's something that kind of solidified this theory a little bit more in my mind. On April 25th, 2018, last year, Taylor Swift posted this photo to her Instagram. It's a picture of her rehearsing for the Reputation Stadium tour wearing a shirt that just says Lovers. Guys, this could be it. What do you think? I. I go back and forth on whether or not I think Lover is a song name or the album name. I do think it's a song name. I don't think it's it's a whole album, but I don't know. The word Lover is also in the lyrics of the song Me, so I, I just don't know. I don't know. Tell me what your thoughts are because that's probably like the biggest one that everyone's talking about right now. So. As I started the script for this video, I was into this being like, oh yeah, the album is totally called Lover. Like, what else would it be? But now I think it's called something else, and here's why. In Taylor Swift's live stream yesterday, she said that we all missed the easiest, most obvious clue that she included in this music video. She said that the album name and the next single title are somewhere hidden in the me music video. So here's where my head is. Her first Instagram post in the countdown was the diamond heart from her earrings. There were 13 hearts 
specifically painted on the mural in Nashville that has now been confirmed to be created by Taylor Swift. In Nashville at the mural, she told the entire crowd that there were clues and hints all over the mural about her upcoming album. Guys, what if the album is called Hearts? That is now the theory that I fully believe. It's so simple and like that would be so easy for us to just overlook. Because when you look at the video closely, there are actually a lot of hidden hearts in there. There's a lot of instances of girls with hard earrings. Taylor Swift has hard earrings in two different times in this video. When Taylor's portraying a 60s dancer on stage, she's got a heart-shaped tunic. TaylorSwift.com had falling hearts on it. So yes, that is now my theory. I think that the album is going to be called Hearts or something to do with hearts. I tweeted it yesterday and a lot of you guys agree with me. A lot of some of you don't, but I would just love to know your thoughts on that. All right, back to the unicorn gargoyle scene. <laughs> This scene reminds me so much of Moulin Rouge, by the way. Did anyone else pick up on that? Okay, so here we see her in a pink lacy dress, the one that we saw on Instagram, that is actually dripping glitter and clouds into the streets, pretty similar to the theme of her website revamp, huh? We see Brendan trying to win Taylor over with flowers, to which she says no. Also, peep the earrings. Then he proposes to her with a ring, and she still says no. And then, of course, it seems like he knows the exact way to her heart because he pulls out a kitten, and she goes, um, yeah, of course, this is exactly what I wanted, you know me so well. Quick fun fact, Taylor Swift actually ended up adopting this kitten from the music video after the music video was done shooting. We found out yesterday that his name is Benjamin Button. So cute, I love that. I love there's like a new little kitten in Taylor Swift's family. She posted a sweet little Instagram about it saying and then there were three and oh, it's just so cute. Like, oh, I want a kitten. All right, so then after he successfully woos her with the kitten, he opens up the side of his jacket to reveal that his heart is a kaleidoscope of loud heartbeats under coats. Yup, she really did that. I have no idea how you visually create those amazing lyrics from Welcome to New York, but Taylor Swift and Dave Myers did it and they did it so well. Very impressive, that is one of my favorite songs from 1989. And just all the details, like loud heartbeats under coats, like that's just, it's brilliant. It's brilliant, that's just the only world. That's like, that is the like word of the day, I need a new word. <laughs> and then we are brought to what looks like a 60s concert or live television performance. Brendan is getting down with his moves and Taylor just looks cute as ever. They're both doing the monkey, the twist and shout, the shimmy, it's definitely a nod to the 60s. And maybe even the musical slash movie Hairspray. I have definitely been seeing a lot of different movie references throughout this whole music video, by the way. So I could definitely believe that one, but yes, this for sure, this whole part is a reference to the 60s. And then the next scene reminds me so much of The Wizard of Oz. Like what? That is straight up the road to Emerald City. Don't at me because I'm right. I know I'm right. They have this whole segment with like a full marching band flash mob thing. And then when the camera rises up, there's another little hidden Easter egg right here. When you look to the left, you can see St. Paul's Cathedral, Big Ben, House of Parliament, and Tower Bridge in the background, which is a big shout out to London. And we of course know why. Okay, and then before I move on, let's talk about this sky for a second. This theory, is insane. So throughout the video, you might have noticed that the sky was very, very different and unique looking. Almost kaleidoscopy and glass ceiling-ish. Well, someone came up with this theory on Tumblr and it's, whoo, it's a doozy. It's a good one though. They said, y'all, this whole music video is taking place inside of a chrysalis. And I have to stop here really quickly because let me be honest with you, it's been a long time since my last science class. So when I first saw this online, I had to Google it. I didn't know what a chrysalis was. So maybe someone out there might not know what it is either. A chrysalis is like the little cocoon thing that a caterpillar makes to become a butterfly. So yeah, fun fact, had to explain that. They continued on and said, she's going to break out of it next and turn into a butterfly, go through metamorphosis, you know? So smart, it's totally what's gonna happen here. And then they added, the rainbow breaks through the chrysalis, y'all. Someone else then responded and said, the mural in Nashville has the same motif of a rainbow breaking the glass too. Ooh, this is a really, really good one. This is so detailed. You guys are good. I honestly think that you guys cracked this and this is a pretty damn good theory and it also goes along with the whole butterfly thing that we've been seeing. Other theories that I saw around the sky and its unique look was that a few people said that they saw writing in the sky. This one in particular from Natalie on Twitter said that she sees the word home in the sky twice throughout the video. I personally don't see it. Like I've tried to look really hard and I don't really, I see like maybe an H, but I don't know if I believe that one. Do you guys see it? Comment down below. Tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me if we're all, I mean, I always say that. We're all crazy, we know that. But what do you think of this particular theory of home written in the clouds? And then we see Taylor and Brendan in another kaleidoscope scenario that looks like Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. And one of you guys out there noticed something that I just think is worth bringing up because it's pretty good. Right before the scene changes during Brendan and Taylor's partner dance, they notice that Brendan hits Taylor's heels three times. 
Who else hits their heels three times? Oh, why Dorothy does from The Wizard of Oz. While she says there's no place like home. Coincidence? I, I have no clue, that's a really good one. Brendan literally sits there and hits her heels three times and then the scene changes and like, oh, that's a good one, that's a really, really good one. I see the idea of like the theme of home being incorporated in this album somehow. That was a really smart one, I just, I've gotta know your thoughts on this. All right, now the last scene. Probably my favorite one of the entire video. It's just so colorful and fun. We first see Brendan in the streets outside, and guys, as soon as I saw this for the first time, I was like, yo, is he pulling some Dumbledore stunts right now? Doesn't it look like he's about to take out all the street lights like Dumbledore did on Privy Drive? No, just me? Well, anyway, he's not. Instead, he's like shooting rainbow goop out of his hands into the sky to make like rainbow fireworks almost. And then we see Taylor dancing in the street, just like casually melting into a rainbow pool of color, as one usually does. And it's just a really fun ending and I love it so much. A lot of you guys have related this part to Fearless because she's dancing in a storm in her best dress, Fearless. And I can see that. That's a pretty good one. I just really love the visuals here. Like they did a great job on this entire music video. Okay, so that was my scene by scene decoding. Now I wanna quickly run through some other theories and rumors that have been running around. So, because Taylor Swift recently told us that the album name and the next single are hidden in this music video, we have gone to great lengths to make up theories to guess as to what the album name and the next single is gonna be called. Some of the ones that come to mind are Angel, Roses, Butterfly, Lover, Home, Kaleidoscope, and the name that I think it is, Hearts, or something to do with hearts. I also did see a really interesting theory about the album being called Calm, because during the argument in French, she mentions the word calm three times within 13 seconds. And then on top of that, she recently said in a Tumblr post, gonna tell you everything so soon, I promise. There's just lots to tell you about it, so I wanted to wait a second, let us all calm down first. So yeah, that's a pretty good theory, good looking out, that's, I don't know how you guys do this, but that was really smart. But I do need to point out what she said before that in this exact same post. This was a Tumblr post that Taylor Swift was responding to because there have been rumors that her song and music video, Me, are actually part of the soundtrack for the new movie, Secret Life of Pets, because the Secret Life of Pets actually had a Taylor Swift themed ad run before the premiere of the music video, and Taylor Swift was just clarifying. So at the beginning of this post, she wrote, this song is for my album and then she put a heart emoji. So when I read that sentence with my album name theory in mind, I see it as her saying, this song is for my album hearts, right? It makes sense. We know that she loves being cryptically, cryptically secret. The more I think about it, the more I believe it. And I just cannot get away from that theory, especially after this decoding video, but I wanna know your thoughts. You have to tell me what you think. A few other things, a lot of you guys remember the lyrics from Endgame where she says, reputation precedes me. Reputation precedes me. And wow, there have never been truer words spoken. Reputation literally preceded her new single, Me. Which again, leads me to ask the question, how long has she had this song finished? This song has potentially been finished for over a year and we're just now hearing it. What else does she have up her sleeves? And then other movie references that I saw, I definitely saw some Moulin Rouge, like I said, Mary Poppins, of course, but there were also elements of like singing in the rain, or in this case, singing in the rainbow goop, and Wizard of Oz. All right, and then last, I wanna chat with you guys about the kaleidoscope theory because this is one of the biggest ones out there. So throughout the video, we see at least three instances of a kaleidoscope in some way. Another fun fact for you is that a group of butterflies is actually called a kaleidoscope. Didn't know that, who came up with those rules? That's weird, but cool, whatever. So the video literally literally starts out with us seeing a kaleidoscope of butterflies emerge from the snake, and then Brendan opens his heart cavity into a kaleidoscope of loud heartbeats under his coat. And then of course we have the Mario Kart Rainbow Road kaleidoscope scene. And then a lot of other people were saying that the sky actually reminds them of a kaleidoscope as well. Which is all really, really good theories. I mean, the fact that Taylor said that we missed obvious easy ones made us all go back, rewatch the video over and over again, and be like, what did we miss? How could we have missed this? She said it was easy. She said it wasn't cryptic. How do we miss it? So now we're like picking up the most obvious seeming clues and just putting it together. But honestly, this is like my most favorite part of being a Swifty is we do this. And sometimes we're right and sometimes we're wrong, but that's the fun in it. <sighs> and guys, we officially made it. We are officially in the TS7 era. I mean, things are getting wild. It sounds like Taylor Swift is gearing up to reach out and choose people for her secret sessions that we all believe is happening in June. And it's just an exciting time to be alive, honestly. I, uh there's so much exciting stuff happening and I love all of you guys for blowing me up on social media right now, telling me all of your theories. I appreciate all of them so much. And I'm excited to see what you guys think about all the theories I talked about today. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you think. Were there any theories that I missed? 
let me know because there's a lot of things to discuss. <sighs> All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my first decoding video of this new era. If you did, go ahead and show me by leaving a like. Your likes really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And <sighs> I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Ooh.